Hi, I'm Michael Cashew. And I'm Adi Cashew, and you're listening to the WAG Podcast. This podcast is about health, wellness, and personal development. Each episode is a short conversation between Adi and I on a single topic with actionable steps. We cover everything from food, mindset, fitness, and relationships. We started WAG because of the way health and fitness changed our lives, so we hope to share a tool or two that helps you along your way. Hey, before we get the show started, I want to let you know that we are reopening registration for our coach certification on May 5th. And if you're someone that has had his or her life changed by a nutrition coach yourself and you're ready to give back, then this program could be for you. If you're just someone that wants to learn and gain knowledge for yourself, then this could also be for you. If you want to start a side hustle, a full-on career in nutrition, then this is a phenomenal program. This is a six-phase course that ranges from the fundamentals of nutrition science to the art and psychology of actually getting people results to setting and changing macronutrient profiles for people. And the bulk of the program, the most impactful part is the sample check-ins that you will do under the guide of a digital mentor. You're going to be given feedback and support throughout the entire course. Registration opens May 5th. And if you're interested, you can go to workingagainstgravity.com forward slash coach hyphen certification. And if you're interested, I highly recommend signing up during the pre-sale. That's when you can get a $200 discount and a ton of bonuses that are worth over $2,000 themselves. Again, if you're interested, go to workingagainstgravity.com forward slash coach hyphen certification. Adi, hello. Hey, Michael. It's great to be here with you today. Every day. It's my favorite. (laughs) I think it might be my favorite thing in the world. Being here with me? Just like every day with you. Just like that you're my person, you know? We should probably keep going on this. No. (laughs) (laughs) The corniest intro. Yeah. Well, I mean, right before the show, you just shared about uh, I'm not on social media anymore. And Michael was telling me, asking me if I saw the post that he made, but I haven't because now he's making me feel like I have FOMO, that I'm not on, whatever. That's a whole other episode, but he's like, I shared about how I miss you and I love making time for each other and it was a cute picture of us and now I'm just like, I love you more. (laughs) I'm glad. (laughs) Thanks for joining us today. Today, we are talking about how to challenge people that you coach, how to give them direct feedback, how to give them advice and, and have tough conversations with people that you, you know, give like telling them how they might do better in a way that they don't immediately get defensive in a way that they can really hear and a way that leads to behavior change. Yeah. I think a a nice way of summing it all up is like there's the cheerleader coach and then the coach that gives tough love. And this is how to give the tough love without making people too mad at you or offending them or disrespecting them. Mm Mm-hmm. And I don't even know if I would call it tough love. It's just like the art of giving direct feedback. Yeah. I think tough love gets a, a ha, ha, I don't know. There's, I have a lot of stories about tough love coming from the addiction community, like just kind of outcasting people. Well, I mean, okay, we're just, we're just defining tough love differently. For me, tough love is being direct while also being respectful. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's why love is there, you know? And this is so important because while cheerleading and encouragement and acknowledgement are really important in coaching, a lot of times people really need to have someone pointing out their blind spots. This is what really leads to a lot of massive results in coaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people need you to point out where they are messing up, even if it's not a blind spot, even if they're, even if they know they're also messing up. I think that pointing it out in a way in a way like we're going to talk about today helps people realize you noticed too mm-hmm. and that you're actually standing for them, you know, being greater than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're not just sitting back and waiting for them to bring things up. You are bringing your own consciousness into their life mm-hmm. and really looking for ways to help them improve. And we've talked about this on a number of episodes. When you 
are courageous enough to have these kinds of conversations to say this kind of stuff to people, you will become one of the most trusted people in their lives if they are ready to hear it. Mm -hmm. Because in order to tell people, like when you're telling people things like this, when you're being direct, you are risking them getting defensive, lashing out at you. You're risking the relationship in a way which takes vulnerability. And again, if they're ready to hear it, it builds so much trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this to me is love. It's like my actual love language is people pointing out tough things and allowing me to maintain my dignity at the same time. So my evolution with this is, I would say I started paying attention to the way that I received feedback when I was in recovery. And they had a lot of very tough love, as you put it, therapists that were very direct, oftentimes really aggressive. And at the time, honestly, that's exactly what I needed. I needed to be shaken up. I needed a kind of an aggressive approach because I was, I would overanalyze everything and I would, yeah, I, would, I was just very defensive. So I needed them to be pushy with me. When I became a coach, I tried this same approach with uh, in strength and conditioning. And I think I was oftentimes just way too aggressive. I wasn't asking them if they were open to the feedback. Um, and, and part of it was like a little bit ego based, like, watch me, I don't give a shit what anyone thinks. I'm just going to, I'm going to say what's on my mind. And it was, it was part of this identity of being like a hard ass. And sometimes it worked, but very rarely. Yeah. Um, and just for anybody that's listening and they hear our baby in the background, he is just babysitting himself right now. <laughs> just Throwing kidding. food everywhere. No, he actually is with somebody. So um, he's just eating and he's a loud eater. But I just close this loop. Yeah, totally. And so over the years, I've learned... I, I've come to believe like what I'm really trying to do is just serve the people that I'm coaching and I've tried to find w more grace, more skill in the way that I deliver this feedback. And a lot of what we're going to talk about today is some of the things that I've used. Yeah. Do you think that there's a difference? So in addiction and recovery, that was exactly what you needed, but then transferring it over to fitness it didn't necessarily land as well. Do you think that that's, do you think that there's like, do you still believe that that was a good approach for people in addiction and recovery? Well, I think the thing is what I was picking up on at the time was the aggressive piece. Reflecting back on it now, I can see all of the ways that they were really gentle with us, mm -hmm. all of the, or with me, all of the ways that they really held space for me to just feel whatever I was feeling. They were, unbelievable at what they did and at the time i just over over focused on them calling me out and pushing me that's a really interesting point it brings up for me that the people who are really great at this at giving direct feedback while also leaving you feeling like you are motivated inspired and can be better are doing a lot of the things that we're about to talk about that aren't as noticeable mm -hmm. and they're not necessarily the things that you'd pick up on but they're the things that you feel where something like the the aggression or the directness is so in your face that it's hard to not notice that um the other gentler approaches around it allow for it to create the result that you're looking for but are not as noticeable mm -hmm. so what's it been like for you getting a nutrition coach when you were six, 16 16 16 and having that experience with them and now coaching so many of your own clients yeah i have had a lot of I think I was raised in a in a family of direct feedback, you know, where my mom was super clear with, you know, what you're doing is not serving you. And I definitely think there's moments where there could have been some like softness around it that maybe would have helped me a little bit more, but you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, And when she integrated taking me to a nutrition coach who held me accountable and was direct with me and had like clear facts that she was pointing me towards, but also 
was like holding my hand through it, that was the recipe for me to be 100% successful. Mm -hmm. So like I had the directness from my mom and like her love and support. And then I had this nutrition coach who was the authority who was giving me a structure and a plan and also pointing out where I was not meeting that plan Mm -hmm. um, really helped me be successful. And then with my clients now, I definitely lean more towards the cheerleader side. I feel like that's just my my style of coaching. Um, I'm more on the you know, on the like kind of allow people to just figure things out on their own. And then I, when I notice something like people are not achieving their goals and they've been doing a lot of work, what seems like, and they feel like they're doing a lot of work. That's when I'll come in and be like, Hey, let's reassess what's going on. Be more direct and use a lot of the strategies that we're using. We're talking about today. So let's talk about some of the how to. So these are a number of different strategies that we use in no particular order. So first, as kind of a contextual piece, I think it's really important to ask yourself where this feedback is coming from. And I'll use myself as an example. If I really look at why I was giving some of the feedback that I was back in the day to strength and conditioning clients, it was to make it was to, to like prop up this identity I had as a hard ass to like just say whatever came came into my mind it was sometimes like a I was I was kind of pissed off that people weren't listening to me and it was like a little bit of a spiteful thing and if I would have really searched within myself at the time a lot of it was more about myself rather than in the interest of them getting results mm-hmm. yeah totally So really ask yourself where this is coming from. Is it coming from your own ego or are you really trying to help this person? If you're trying to help them, if you find, you know, if you really feel that you're trying to help and it's coming from a compassionate place, uh, one great way to start is to soften the landing. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about some different ways you can do that? Yeah, I think softening the land. Well, if it's not coming from a compassionate place, maybe just don't provide somebody advice (laughs) so yeah only move forward if it's coming from a place where you genuinely believe this is in their best interest and it's less about you more about them and i think sometimes we can like trick ourselves into believing that so like really take a a good look inside as to if that is the truth for you or not for me ways to soften the landing i ask for permission like can i can I point out a couple things that I'm noticing or can I give you some feedback or, Hey, there's a couple things that I see here and I have, I want to, I want to point a few things out. Are you open to hearing them? Like that gets this person to opt into it. So literally like one sentence can make all the difference. And it not only gets them to opt into it, it allows people to brace themselves. So if you just kind of offload feedback onto somebody without giving them this sentence, then they now are probably going to be in a reactive state where they have to just like hear that feedback and be like, whoa, I now have to deal with this. If you're like, hey, feedback is coming, they can, you know, brace themselves a little bit, prepare where now instead of just being immediately put into that reactive state, they can, you know, prepare for potential emotions that might come up. I think it also can take them from feeling like, oh, I'm doing something wrong to I'm choosing to hear this because I want to get better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A big thing that I do also is I let people know that they are, before I even say this, please know that I could be totally off. I'm, I'm, I know I'm only seeing one perspective and you are, you are in your own life and you might have tons of information that I don't have. So if this doesn't fit, I no hard feelings like Mm -hmm. try it on if it fits keep it whatever doesn't fit leave it and I think that like gives people also permission to be like okay they're not telling me that this is for sure the case they're just pointing out a couple things that they're noticing and I have the flexibility to you know accept this as true or be like no that doesn't resonate with me and that's I'm not going to take that another thing you can do is you know, some people will call this like a feedback sandwich. This is like the beginning part of the the sandwich. Remind them how much you respect them, acknowledge them in some way, and just really let them know like they're doing awesome 
and you have some feedback for them. Mm -hmm. I was on a trip recently where I was coaching some people and there was this guy that I thought was holding back a little bit and we were in a circle sharing and I told him, uh, I stopped at one point and I said, hey man, I want you to know I respect the hell out of you. And I listed out a couple of specific, very specific reasons I respect him. And I said, and I feel like you're holding back, you're speaking from your head and not your heart. And it seemed to land really, really well. Like he knew I cared about him. I thought very highly of him and he felt like I was really looking out for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nobody wants to like, everyone wants to look good in the eyes of others. So in this situation, there's this moment where that this pe- these people can, the person you're coaching can see w- your feedback as you thinking less of them mm-hmm. or that they're, n- they're not in as high of a regard. And this can help um, av- avoid that, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I also like to give people permission to disagree. Like, hey, I'm going to give you this feedback and feel free to ignore me. Feel free to to just tell me actually that I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, recently, I was coaching a client and she was she happens to go like she really flip flops a lot on what she wants and what her goals and motivations are. So she she one day she wants to be in this weight class. The next day she wants to be in another weight class. And it, it's this it's a really a constant conversation of. I want to. I want to compete in this sport. I don't want to compete in this sport. Um, and it, and it, there's like from my perspective, it's like we're having the same conversation. And then we. It seemed like one week we were talking about getting really serious, dialing things in, being really disciplined. And then legitimately, two weeks later, it was like, no, I need to be more relaxed. I need to be more flexible. And I just was like, hey, this might be. I might be wrong here. And feel free to disagree with me. Maybe I'm missing some information, but I'm noticing that the pendulum just seemed to have just completely swung in the other direction. And I want to just point that out to you and see, you know, what's going on there. And she actually disagreed with me. She was like, you know, I see from your perspective how you can gather that and like how you came to that conclusion. And this is the information that you're maybe missing Mm -hmm. that, mean shows that you know that's not the pendulum didn't actually swing Mm -hmm. far in the other direction and that was really helpful for me as a coach because now i have that information that i was missing before and sometimes when you say something to somebody that's actually wrong it it triggers something inside of them to be like no that person's wrong and they get more sure of themselves about what is right and so you as a coach being wrong is sometimes a gift to that person Mm -hmm. it's like they can be like no that doesn't fit for me And so they feel stronger about what does fit for them. And they get to build their own self-esteem through that process. Yes. And they can be more sure of what, where their path is or what works for them or what doesn't work for them. And so you being wrong about it is actually also helpful to them. Mm -hmm. Um, That's, I feel like that's being a good coach. Yeah. And the, you demonstrating humility by acknowledging that you could be wrong builds trust as well. For sure. And sometimes you're just wrong. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and sometimes you know for sure, and I think it's okay to be confident in that, but you better be damn sure that you're right. If and, you're not, yeah. if you're not going to use any sort of uh, hesitancy or tentative tentativeness. Yes. So next, once you've, I don't know, given some sort of preface or context, say what you see. And my highest encouragement is not to sugarcoat it. <clears throat> Sugarcoating is like if, you know, if I see a D, I don't know, she keeps saying she wants to lose weight and she's not doing anything to really help it, uh, it would be like, hey, I, I know you're really trying really hard. If I don't actually see her trying really hard, then sugarcoating would be like, I know you're trying really hard, um, et cetera, et cetera. And it doesn't actually communicate what I'm seeing to her. Mm-hmm. And it can actually create more, uh, more harm than good sometimes. And it does, this doesn't mean be mean, mm-hmm. but it, it means give them the feedback directly as you see it. Yeah. So kind of like with tough love, don't sugarcoat can be viewed as being rude. So instead of saying, you know, I see that you're trying really hard and, um, you you know, but I'm also noticing that when that person's not trying really hard, the other option, there's not only one other option being like, you want to lose weight and you're actually doing a terrible job mm-hmm. at doing it. 
That's like not your only other option. You have um, a way that you can be, which is being direct. Like we have this conversation often where you're talking about wanting to lose weight and I know it's hard. And so where is it that we can start making changes and behaviors towards achieving that goal? And nowhere in there did I say like, you're trying really hard. I know that, um, you know, you've been doing a lot of different things to try and make this happen. It was just clear, like it's not happening. We talk about this a lot and I want to know what we can do about it. Mm -hmm. Here is a kind of template for how you can give this sort of feedback. Uh, this is something that I learned in wilderness therapy. It is observation, perception, and then your hope for the other person. So it could go like, uh, so an observation is something objective that you're seeing. My observation, Adi, is that you, you have said for the last six weeks that you want to lose weight and you haven't worked out a single time because you told me you haven't worked out a single time. That's something objective that no one is going to argue with, right? Then the perception is something subjective that I think is going on. My, my perception is that you're overcommitted in your life and you don't really want to lose weight that bad and that's okay. That could be my perception. Mm -hmm. And my hope for you is that you set more realistic goals for yourself. Mm -hmm. So observation, perception, and your hope for the other person. Yeah. And also make sure you know this person really well because there's a couple things in there where I would be like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> you know, who do you think you are? <laughs> um, so Arbitrary make, example. Yeah, but make sure you just know that person well and like pick things without sugarcoating, like being direct, but um, yeah. And one thing I want to mention is I just think it's important not to make a something subjective seem like it's objective. Like don't talk about your thoughts or feelings about what you think about someone else as if they are fact. And so that's why that model, I think, really yeah, helps. Yeah, totally, totally. So it's like my perception is that you don't want to lose weight that bad. Not that that's true. Right. Got it. Totally. Yeah. And then at the end, you can invite this person to speak. It's not necessary, um, but you can ask them, you know, how is this landing for you? Do you have any thoughts about it? And then, or you can, if, if you don't want to like keep over processing it, you can just be like, sit with that, take some time, see if it fits for you or not. And then we'll talk about it another time. Um, or we won't. And just sit with that and you keep what you want and you don't, if you leave what you don't. But if you do want to talk about it, you can invite them to speak at the end, obviously. And just a recap of what we talked about. So first, really search within yourself and ask, where is this coming from? And if it's not coming from a compassionate, helpful place, then maybe ask yourself why you really want to give that feedback in the first place. Maybe you have some work to do on yourself. If it is coming from a compassionate place, try some different ways of softening the landing, like asking for permission to give feedback, uh, reminding them how much you respect them or acknowledging them in some way. You might use the observation, perception, and my hope for you method. And then finally, invite them to speak about it. And if you follow some or all of these steps, you will be very skilled at coaching. Like This is such a useful model in coaching. You, you will become one of the most trusted people in this person's life and they will really appreciate you. Yeah, definitely. Get out there. Have tough conversations, guys. Later. Thanks for joining us. Stay in touch by signing up for our newsletter at workingagainstgravity.com or on Instagram at workingagainstgravity. And don't forget to subscribe to us on iTunes, leave us a five-star review, and refer a friend. We'll be back next week with another episode. Talk to you then.